Welcome back to another episode of the Friedcast, where we uncover the positive angles of technology and education that shape our future. Today, we're joined by Monica Weaver, a seasoned educator and visionary who has transformed learning environments through technology. With decades of experience and a heart full of stories, Monica will share her journey of resilience and the transformative power of embracing change. Ready to dive into a conversation that merges the human spirit with technological advancement? Let's get started. Hello, Fried family, Fried fans. It's so great to know that you're out there. I can't really see you. I was going to say, it's so great to see you, but I can't really see you. But <laughs> I know you're out there either watching or listening. But welcome. Welcome to the Fried Cast episode number 1,000, I think. We're up there somewhere. And okay. you're going to see a, a magic deck because uh, hopefully our friend Lauren, our, our co my co-host, will come in and appear magically. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Daryl. You've seen me in, in these episodes. I'm back again, Fried Tech Experience Designer. And we have two very special guests that share a unique history together. And I'll let them introduce themselves. How about that? Yeah, I'm just here to listen. Like, I'm just here to join the party. So, you know, I just didn't want to, I, I just had so much FOMO today that I was like, I put me in, put me in the game. Coach. Oh, gosh, anytime. And we, we've had you, Brooke, in an episode I before. I know, so, so excited. Yeah, well, I'm Brooke Larry, for those of you who may not know me. And uh, yeah, I work here at Fry Tech with all our live learning folks. And I, you know, emailed Daryl and Lauren. I was like, I have the perfect person for Friedcast, my friend Monica and Harlan Jen. And so we're so excited to have you with us, Monica. Awesome. And, you know, getting to meet Brooke online a couple of years ago to today and the impact that Fried Tech has, tech, Fried Tech has had in HCISD has been incredible, but more so getting to work with a company, right, that uh, is so flexible and so supportive and the staff is incredible. Every time you guys come in and our audience is like asks, asks an extra question or asks something completely random, all of your people have said, oh, great, I can take care of that. If I don't get the answer today, I'm going to get it for you tomorrow. And they follow through and they go beyond to help anybody with different types of questions. And, you know, we can work with lots of consultants and companies and things go great. But, you know, what happens when there's like a, a, a difficulty, a challenge, let's say in a schedule, like then what happens? And Fry Tech has been off the charts, amazing, super flexible. Hello. And Brooke is the root of that. I mean, she just makes Hello. it happen. Oh, my goodness. I promise we didn't pay her to say those. And those we're are... done. <laughs> Podcast over. Thanks for listening. <laughs> and this is Monica Weaver from Harlan Jen um, ISD. And yeah, and I, I promise that was not a paid advertisement, but we're so happy that she said such wonderful things because we love working with your teachers so much. Our team is like, oh, Harlan Jen's coming up. Let's go. A um, couple of them, the moment they see it on the calendar, they fight over who's going and when can they book travel. So Yes, and then so I have excited. to be sure that there's equal TLC among them. Yes, you do. Talk, and they want to know, did Monica take you here for lunch? Did you get, you know, to go here? Did she, was she with you? And then I'm like, uh-oh, I better <laughs> Back, back, it is, it's sure. a real competition on who does Monica <laughs> love more in the learning guide groups. That is Ooh, so true. <laughs> uh, they're all comp competing yeah, for it, I'm sure. But Lauren's back. Hey, hey Lauren. Lauren. Can you hear me? <gasps> yes. Oh, okay. oh look did you see that? that? I mean, Monica brought some special effects with her. <laughs> yeah, you don't need pride. You are oh, tech savvy. Do I don't know what just happened. <laughs> Start a stream yard? I just did this, and then I did this, and then <laughs> I don't know where wow. it went, and I don't know where it came from, but let me tell you what, that's about how this career has gone. <laughs> you just naturally emitted that from your persona. It just That's not even camera trickery. That's just you. For anyone who's just listening, her whole background just like lit up in fireworks. Beautiful fireworks. <laughs> of your microphone. <laughs> I'm trying I tried so hard. Everybody, not to just, yeah. everybody, laugh everybody so in the loud. screens is trying to recreate that moment, and we're not able to do <laughs> yeah. it. Yay! Congratulations. Oh, there it is again! Yay. Wow! Okay. Hi, yay! 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 <laughs> Say yay! No. Yay, yay! Yay! Okay, yay. so I, I may or may not know that why this is happening. 
Okay. Are you using a are you using a MacBook? I am using iMac. Okay, oh, there you go. So I'm on an iMac. Do so can like do hearts and Woo! yeah. Oh. The P symbol. I think it does like balloons. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Is that a, a setting on my Mac so, that I need to turn some, on? So some of the learning guides can do it on theirs, but I can't get it to do it on mine. There's like a whole list of things you can do. And I cannot get it to work on my it ha it has something to do with like the webcam and um so, uh setting on your your macbooks or your imacs and i i cannot make the magic happen but the lgs have figured out how to make it on theirs and we can't get it to work on mine i yet. need to figure what a fun to figure this out ASAP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is instructional technology yes this, this is how it works and right? education and how it goes <laughs> hey we say all the time here at uh fry tech we you know we just click around and find out like that's how we learn things here, here i am i'm in my settings trying to figure this one out mm -hmm. Ooh, i love it what a no. fun <laughs> unexpected joy yeah i'm so glad my microphone wasn't working without you yeah <laughs> oh, i love it i love it but monica there there there's more to you know just working with with you and our uh, fried tech in Harlingen, but we've just found out that you're going to be retiring soon. Yes, I'm super excited at the same time, super sad, right? And um, I just kind of almost want to start backwards, right? Like like 30 years and people say, is there what old people, old people say is like time flies and it, it happened in a wink of an eye and all that. And then you're saying those exact words and you're like, okay, I've got to stop. But 30 years in education, I mean, it's super exciting because it's not just like being a teacher, right? You know, I started in the classroom, was there 30 years, but there's so many opportunities in education, right? And before technology was like the thing, right? I mean, we wrote a NASA Explorer School grant and we got to travel the United States to learn, to work with engineers, to work with astronauts. I was telling Brooke the other day, I said, hey, Brooke, I had an opportunity in simulation to dock the International Space Station with the shuttle and be able to dock that, you know, and as an educator, and you go back into the classroom and you bring that to your students. I mean, the nothing is impossible. And now with technology and the advancement of technology and the speed of innovation, like nothing is impossible for our kids in education. And we as educators, we're having a hard time keeping up with that, right? As they walk into our classrooms, we have this new audience of learners that have grown up with an iPad, right? Mm -hmm. Have grown up with technology and we're having trouble reaching them and connecting with them. And so that's our journey, right? And I know your CEO has just re recently written that book, that amazing book that's coming out this summer and listening to her talk and introduce the book, you're like, oh yeah, you know, like there's so many pieces there that are gold nuggets, right? For educators. So I can't wait for that book to come out. But I was getting that opportunity with Brooke and uh, I was talking to her and I was like, and then the day came, I got an iPad and I got an iPad for my classroom with my students. And I go to the librarian and I'm like, I don't get it. What do I do with this thing? Right. <laughs> and so the librarian was like walking me through, you know, like what is substitution? I'm like, that's not all. And she's like, no, that's not all. Right. So taking me through the SAMR model. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the SAMR model, you don't get to that high, high level with really not understanding substitution. It, you know, it takes those steps to get there. Right. Mm -hmm. And so just that experience altogether, right. In technology, in education, right. Going from no technology to some technology, right. To now post COVID where everybody has technology. And again, just like I said earlier, we're having trouble connecting with our learners learners because of our, um, let's say, lack of knowledge of what they're going through, their experience, and the speed of technology and innovation right. is so fast <laughs> that that's where Frytech comes in. You know, Frytech comes in and teachers had all this technology during COVID and were, some of them, right, were freak figuring it out, getting online. They had their professional learning community using YouTube left and right, mm -hmm. but having a company like Frytech come in and you're, you're really competing with time. You're not competing with a teacher who wants to learn. You're competing right. with a teacher who's having to learn curriculum, having to learn this new, this, this new, that, right. And then you want to, the, it's like, 
what to teach, they're being bombarded with. Right, right. My tech is how do we teach it? Let's leverage technology on how to teach it. And that has what's, that's what's been the great piece of working with Brooke, is they bring in the how to do it. We showed Brooke, hey, look, this is our instructional priority. This is what HCISD's initiative is. And then they take that foundation and they say, and we're going to help you do that. We're going to show you how. And so having them come in, walk step by step, but again, not like, um, you know, everybody in the room, again, like our students, adult learners, student learners is at a different level. But being able to come in with Frytech and say, for those of you that know it, we're going to, you take off this direction, right? Here's, let's say, a choice board. You go this direction. And for those of you who are just learning, I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to walk you through this. And that's what Frytech has been able to do in our system. Yeah, the personalization of because personalization of, of of teaching and and learning. So that's what we try to emphasize, like how teachers should teach your students as a ed tech provider. That's our main goal. That's we that we teach our teachers based on their level. And and you're right, like technology right now, it's like taking drinking out of a fire hose. It's changing <laughs> like constantly. And then we have artificial intelligence that just you know came out of nowhere, and now we're all trying to figure out and navigating how that works. But you've seen it all. So 30 years of education. So you started when you were like, was it 90s, right? Like mid 90s? In the mid 90s. I was going to say I was 15, but you went. Yes. Yeah. 90s, I, was just so like, I, like, you, I, can't, I, I find it hard to believe that you've been in education for 30 years, but okay. So that's, why old people, that's why older people say it was a blink of an eye. <laughs> it's like, sure here we is. are. Here we are. And, um, you know, I think one of the other pieces is working with Brooke, you know, a, a lot of it is, okay, yes, we're going to talk about the services Tech offers, right? But it's not just that, you know, Brooke and I built a relationship, right? Yeah. And I can remember the day, you know, we met, the, like the first time we met online and we were talking HCISD and we were talking our pri instructional priorities and Brooke's like, man, you've got this all together. You've really got a plan. You've got it mapped it out. She was like, you know, I, if I could have the stars and, and uh, glitter come out now, she was like, you're amazing. I wish that you were in every district and who we got to work so true. <laughs> so, and then the first visit comes and we have our first session and it's off the charts amazing and we're celebrating but then my district is like mm, you can't have that much time with teachers you can't pull them out of the classroom i mean the plan just like mm -hmm. like it was so, and i was just like so sad because it was in-person training i mean we were just teachers were ranting and raving how wonderful it was than the district. And you know that politics and priorities, right? It wasn't a, a bad thing. It was true. Right. Teachers needed time with curriculum, <clears throat> new curriculum. And so our program got cut just like that. And that's where I say that the work with Frytech isn't just about the people that come in the system, but like people like Brooke, who know she had just met me. And yes, we had spent some time together, but she had to trust me that what I was talking about and what the goals that we wanted to achieve uh, were still in place. And so when I called Brooke, I was probably in tears saying, oh my <laughs> God, we have to change the program. We have to do it all virtual and this and that. And then she stuck with me and year two, here we are back in classrooms, not in classrooms, but back on campuses, back with teachers, face to face and, you know, making it happen in our district. And so that's what I want to say also that when we work with others, right, it's not just about the plan. It's about right. the people and building the relationships. And Brooke was super flexible. And she's like, Monica, we're not going to worry about it. We're going to flip this and then we're going to talk about what's next. And so that was a huge piece about this partnership. And again, yes, Fried tech, super talented people coming in. You know, I can list the names of like Brooke and Chantel and Amy and Steve and Courtney coming to our system, right? But it's not just that. It's not just the service. It's the relationship you have with the people and how you treat the people and how you work through the challenges, right? Mm -hmm. As you as you uh, build these partnerships. I don't think yeah. people really talk about that too much. 
Yeah, and I have to say, you know, <clears throat> Monica really has pushed us to help her think out of the box with the challenges that have come up because we do have these year-long contracts and and Monica is so organized and has such a great plan. And she's like, this is where I know my what my teachers need because she's so in tune with them, with those relationships. And she's very protective of their time and making sure that it's exactly what they need. And even one of the other pivots talking about partnerships, we found an opportunity to bring in our partners at Adobe and Lori came in and did some work immediately with Monica and the admins and other folks to get them started and that has now taken off so somewhere we didn't even know we were going that new tech arises <laughs> that new partnership arises mm -hmm. and, and Monica's like wait what's new what's happening like let's mm -hmm. let's how can we use this and has been a, a huge huge help in even implementing that new service in their district as well yeah and I you know what Brooke being willing to take a risk right you know that's also part of the relationship because you're bringing something to the table and you're showing me right you know and like you said i'm the advocate for my teachers like if we're going to bring them in and we're going to use their time it needs to be something they're going to turn around and use in the classroom and so your your perspective as you work with us right is to say let me show physically like you literally showed me let's take a lesson let's take a teak you know you, very granular you got with me very granular so that what i knew i was getting ready to push out in the system was something that uh teachers would need and want and that was good for students right so that's another perspective right there you it doesn't matter who who you are in fry tech whether it's management or you're the one that goes into the classrooms you need to know your stuff and your people know your stuff Oh, I think again, I promise y'all, we did not pay Monica to like <laughs> come on the podcast and oh just like, we well, really you know, came to talk about her, but now we're yeah. all just sitting over here. But <laughs> it's, it's experience, right? You know, different, you know, you're one consulting company that comes into the system. There are many that come into the system and there's, so you get to know them and you get to realize, you know, sometimes that advocacy, I have to put my foot down and I'm like, absolutely not. We're not doing that. You know what I mean? And um, I think that that's where we talk about risk and trust kind Kind of like in a balance you know you're out there bringing this new thing and anybody in this role right innovation it's like i think it was daryl was like and tomorrow we're gonna have this new thing come around right it's minute <laughs> by minute moment by moment and anybody in this role needs to kind of be that right you need to you can't squash it right just like you said ai it is like a water hose right but you know what i'm so proud of our education system i'm so proud of going to like tca and the different conferences because everybody is talking ai and you are the ones reassuring those of us that are at schools that yes there's ai and there's caution but check out what it can do right check out a, a great way to leverage it yes caution but check out this great way to leverage it just like anything else like we talked about covid and how we went from uh, pockets of success with technology in classrooms to everybody having technology mm -hmm. and so how can you meet the need of everybody you can't right we're kind of we're coming behind the system Right. And that's what's happening with AI. I mean, AI is not new. You're talking, what, 1950s with the beginning of AI. But yet here we are as technology has advanced. Now the speed of change is so fast that, mm -hmm. again, we're trailing behind. And so now people are talking legislation or they're talking like, how do we put policies in place as a board wow. and things like that? And so we have a full committee just for AI in our system because we want to use it. Wow. Kids, we want to use it, but we want to use it responsibly. We want to leverage it right and so there's so much talk out there and so staying informed with partners like you who who educate us as well i think that's important too well i love the word caution like using it with caution i think that's one of the best ways i've actually heard it put you know because there is this fear right but i love the word caution over fear mm -hmm. for using some of the new tech tools absolutely absolutely i so wonder uh, with you know with so much adoption around technology during covid um how much has that impacted the way that schools are embracing ai i wonder if it would be different if we hadn't had that hurdle of mm -hmm. embracing all these new tech pieces making sure every student's got a machine things like that i just as you were talking about it i thought oh my gosh i wonder if we hadn't had covid what the reaction to AI would be. 
Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's <laughs> like all those puzzle pieces are playing out, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it definitely people, I don't think you would have people talking AI, you know, out of every other word that's coming out of people's mouths currently, right? If it weren't for that scenario where we are immersed now, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's also a very exciting time. And yeah. again, I know one of the conversations we were having was educators, we're, you know, we're talking about blended learning. And I remember Amy talking about that in her podcast that she recently did with you about, okay, we're asking teachers to do this, right? But are we asking too much for the teacher, right? And so where do we go when everybody has technology? And, you know, we, we think about what Amy was saying and in her podcast, she talks about how when you're the creator, you know it inside and out, right? So how do we allow the students to be creators? But being a creator comes with experience. You know, you if you give a student something, they may say, I don't know what to do and then shut down, right? So how do we coach them to be creators, right? So that they do learn. Mm -hmm. But any, you know, it could, this is so interesting to not only not about student learning, but it's about adult learning too, right? Because mm -hmm. it's the same way she was talking about being the boss and saying, hey, here's your project. And now, you know, you do this thing. But it was the same thing for me when you would get an assignment. It was like, you, you don't know what you're doing, right? right? It's like the assignment of AI, go put a committee together, <laughs> go figure that out, right? Yeah. And then bring it back to our board so that we can start looking at this, right? I didn't have that task, right? But someone else did. Mm -hmm. And so you, when you're the creator of that, you know it inside and out. How do we get to that level of knowledge in the classroom with our students, right? It Number one, experience. And Two is time. And those are those big things that teachers are like, I don't have the time for that. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. a hurry up, rush job, and you don't get to that level. So it's very interesting. I mean, I even remember as an educator, if someone was threatening my time, that was, <laughs> it really, like, that was my biggest yeah. freak out, is if someone was threatening mm -hmm. my time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I get it. <laughs> I know I was thinking, Monica, you were talking about like when you first started teaching and where tech was and how it goes. I think when I, my very first year of teaching, I taught third grade and I had our digital instructional coach walk in my classroom and she was like, Hey Brooke. And she introduced herself and like school had like, was like the first week. And she's like, has some really exciting news for you. She's like, you've been picked to be the technology pioneer for this campus. And I'm like, Ta -da. Me? What are you talking about? I'm a first year teacher. Uh, well, you know, I can remember calling my mom and being like, can you believe that this happened? They barely even know me and they've given me this job. I mean, now I know that they knew I wouldn't quit. I needed the job. I was a first year teacher. <laughs> and everybody else was going to be like, you want me to do what that's new and extra? But, you know, like I thought I'd receive this award truthfully because of where that yeah. moment has left led me in mm -hmm. my career of teaching it was the greatest reward that i was given that year i was given um five ipod um shuffles the green ones uh -huh. to be specific ipod shuffles yeah and <laughs> yeah. in a third grade Small, classroom yep. one? yes um is that what it, no then maybe it was the nano it the was, was the nano, touch was the or nano? Yeah, it was the like skinny ones. That okay, that's colors. a nano. Yeah, nano. Yeah, nano. Okay, so it wasn't the shuffle. The shuffle was the clip on, right? Yeah, um, you just like you had to go forward and backwards. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we, I got five of them, and I was like, "What do I do with them?" And they're like, yeah. "You're the technology pioneer." Yeah. We wrote a grant. We got all these, and I'm like, "Oh!" And I was like, "What do I do with this thing?" You know. And eventually, I learned to record my voice. And I read books on them. Oh, and then nice. I bought a Belkin headphone splitter. So five students mm. could be on one at a time. There right. You go. So now I had like reading circles, kids reading books. And go. first and year honest, teacher. First year teacher. Look. You go. look. But <laughs> You know, I was given this task and yeah. it was so important and I had to do a report. Like I had to tell them what I was doing. Uh, I think eventually I ended up with the entire district's iPod shuffles. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, but honestly, like those moments, like you were talking about your NASA and, you know, getting that grant, doing that. You just sometimes don't know how those moments in your classroom turn into changing your whole path. You know, it really got me interested in educational technology. And here we are at Fried. And I think all of us at Fried could have those same stories. And Monica, I know that yeah. you are retiring from the district, but you have some other aspirations 
that you're going to still do. And I think that that's important to hear as well. Yeah, definitely. So uh, Brooke is talking about, she's like, I told her, hey, we got up one Saturday morning and in the 90s, right? Remember that, Daryl, in the 1990s? Um, <laughs> that was we, yesterday. We, we got up on a Saturday Best and we idea. went to school and we went to wire those yellow cables through the ceiling so that we could have four desktops in the in the classroom. Like that was my early <laughs> career. It wasn't my first year like Brooke when she got the, that responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how I started, you know, like that's pretty interesting, right? And so, you know, that journey along the way, you guys are these puzzle pieces, our encounters with each other, you know, that encounter that Brooke had that first year, right? Where they look at her and they're like, she's new, she's fresh out of college, she can do this, right? And why did she end up with the district ones? Because nobody else, like without the without right. the support on what to do, where does that level of uh, creativity, right? right? It died except on Brooke's table, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the difference, right? And so, um, you know, along the way we do different things. So five years ago, I was like, took the John Maxwell certification course, right? And I was like teaching, speaking, writing, I'm gonna do this, right? And um, years before that, my sister was like, hey, here's this John Maxwell book. I would think you'd, you know, little small book, you know, started reading about leadership. It's the people in our lives along the way that put deposits, right? I mean, somebody did that for Brooke, but it wasn't like they were thinking of Brooke. They were just saying, hey. <laughs> and so just this puzzle pieces of that, the journey of life and why we wake up every morning are the people that we encounter each and every day, mm -hmm. right? And so here I am five years later and last night in the mail, I got my personal and authentic LLC binder for, Ooh. you know, what I get to do in the future, you know, and I just know there's just so much more about helping people about, I, I'm not saying it's not about technology. I mean, maybe it will be right. Yeah. I don't know. Look, here I am today. Like here, I was like an invitation. Yes. Right. We have to be willing to take that risk and say yes. But I do believe that there's more to helping people, more to encouraging people, building people up, right? And, you know, like I say, every encounter, you know, is so purposeful. If you're so aware, if you're looking at things like Brooke looked at that and said, mm -hmm. I don't know, she could have walked away. Or do you spend the time? How much time yeah. did she spend doing that? A lot. <laughs> right? You know, we just talked about those two things, you know, building experience and time and being willing to say yes can take a risk. So um, I was, that's one of the things I want to share about also my district is that there were programs in place. For me, it was called multipliers in training. We got to like enroll in this course. We got to come meet the senior team members. They'd say, hey, we're going to give you a project that, you know, what does it look like? A project in your classroom and a project for the district are two different things, yeah, right? Yeah. So we're going to partner you up and you want to go out and we want you to like, hey, here's a scenario. You go figure it out with this project. Same way with Brooke. Do I say yes or do I just walk away? Do I invest the time? What do I do? Whirlwind can tell us all, hey, you don't have the time for this right? Yeah. The whirlwind of like, I've got all these things to do. But when you pause and you, you kind of stop time and you stop that whirlwind and you look to see what's most valuable, right? I took this course. I remember my, one of my mentors saying to me, Hey, who knows what you want to do? Cause I would make up jobs at the administration <laughs> building from the classroom. I'd say, Oh, there's a job that I bet I wish they had a job for this. And I wish they had a job for that. Mm -hmm. So I remember approaching one of those senior team members on that project day and saying, hey, I want to let you know I'm interested in being part of instructional technology for the district, right? And that person was like, hey, you need to you need to take your little uh, project and you need to patent it. And I'm like, okay. So I go to the next guy and I'm like, hey, I just want to let you know I'm interested in being part of digital learning for the district. And they said, you know what? Go home tonight and apply. And I'm like, whoa, wait, stop. I said, just be my mentor right now. I'll just say I want to be a part. They said, I, I think you can lead it. And I'm like, what? But again, do we say yes? Do we take the time? Do we stay up to that one o'clock in the morning for that project because it's important to us? You know, those are milestones that we don't know are milestones at the time. So, so I encourage everybody out there, you know, to, to notice those things, pause and notice those things. And then, you know, sooner or later, they're like, and here's library services. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, but uh, I can't say enough about the people along the way and the journey that is super important. Just gave me goosebumps. I know, me you're, too. You're so inspiring. What is Harlan going to do without you? <laughs> no. I'm sure they're like, no, no. Those who are coming behind her know what big shoes Ooh, they I have to feel. 
And Sheesh. Monica has done such a great job already including those in her team. She does not, she does not, she stands alone, but she also doesn't. Like we feel very, it's very easy for me to know who to reach out and connect to that's on her team, that's helping and supporting. And she is already working on setting them up for success and fried tech success in Harlingen next year. She's always looking forward. Yeah. Yes. And now I'm looking forward to uh, an RV trip <laughs> to yeah. New York, <laughs> upstate New York. And that's going to be a whole nother journey in itself. I'm like, should I vlog along the way? Yes, oh, you should. I don't, I don't yes. even know how to, but maybe I should. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Start your Instagram or your TikTok or whatever it is. <laughs> Share it with us so we can watch. Yeah, that's another new learning experience for sure. Let me tell you what. I'm, I know my uh, husband would freak out if I was telling the story. But so RV, like I tell you, is an adventure. So there's one day where like you think you're going to travel for eight, but it multiplies into 10. So you get to your campsite. It like, you know, you're hungry. You're tired. You've been on the road. It's dark. You camp. You start hooking things up. And you're just like, I just need to eat something. I just need to rest. And you hear an explosion. Oh, no. <laughs> because your husband has reverse engineered the sewage at you know, 10 o'clock at night after 10 oh, hours on the road. No. <laughs> and now you're left to clean up. <laughs> and so, again, it's a great story. And we can laugh <laughs> about it now. But, you know, RVing is an adventure. You it really, is. when I say it, it really, really is. And you need to know what you're doing. You do need to be safe. I do want to say that part. So what did you eat? <laughs> did you have to eat after that? Well, you know, that's when you realize you're like, how many paper towels do we have? <laughs> is there a cost limit? Your now? neighbor at 10 o'clock at night in the dark in the woods is not going to want to help you. You're right. Yeah, there's no stores no open and you realize, okay, did we pack everything we, we really need? And so I'm telling, I mean, it's an adventure. So I look, I'm looking forward to that part too. That's well, now, now you have, yeah, you to, have to do vlog. the vlog and <laughs> stories like that. Like, what happened? Now, now we have to know what happens and, next. And, and he wasn't Weavers my husband. Been... Yeah. He wasn't my husband at the time. Right. And so we, you know, we come back, we're like, okay, we survived. And that night, you know, you're sitting there and you're like, just don't talk. Just, <laughs> keep, cleaning, just keep cleaning. Just keep cleaning. <laughs> You can't even go to your own room. And, no, you can't. And the other part is you're in a park. And so, you know, you're always leveling your RV, right? So this was a blessing in disguise that the RV was like slightly tilted. So the reverse of that sewage just kind of went out the front door. So that was a big help. Oh, my god! You know, the angle of the drip, you know. So. To the next uh, trailer down the down. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah, oh my but gosh. It was amazing. We had a great time. We didn't want to leave. So we're one of yeah, that's one of our And you have a story to tell. Oh Absolutely. Monica, tell you, you may we may have to adapt the just keep cleaning. Just keep cleaning. Just keep cleaning. Anytime yeah. there is an explosion that goes wrong in fried tech, like at yes. this point, we may all need to adopt the <laughs> just keep cleaning. Just mm -hmm. keep cleaning. <laughs> yes. And hopefully the angle of the sewage trip. Is oh my gosh. Like I was like, what in the world? Like, you know, how do you really ever get that metaphor. cleaned up? You know, well, let's be looking at the positive. Well, at least, at least the angle was okay. At least the angle you know, was good. I, you have to, I mean, think about it. It matters. Really? The angle was perfect. You Five know, degrees. The angle was perfect. Yeah, I mean, talk about looking for the good in the story. Right. I yeah. love it. The silver lining I... of it all. Uh. I am so thankful I'm here for today. <laughs> this is just, I, I love it. I love this. Yeah. And now I'm going to be really disappointed if you don't vlog yeah, this adventure. Yeah. It's, it's done. We how, just decided for you. You know yes. what? You, you talked about connections and yes. Daryl, I'm throwing you out there. Daryl, I bet could have some tips on some good equipment that you need. Oh, family, I got you. Little you small cameras one, yeah. that mm -hmm. you carry around. The DJI, this is, that's all you need. Yeah. This is a perfect connection right here to help you start your <laughs> vlogging that's adventure. You well, you know mean. what? I was like, you know, it's going to be the first one is going to be where like the camera's reversed or upside down, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> it will be okay. <laughs> So that's what I, people live for. That's I think that goes viral. this night might need to be called just keep cleaning. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, watch the angle. What's your angle? Watch, yeah, what's the angle? What's the angle? RVing, what's the angle? What's the angle? <laughs> Let me, yeah. 
<laughs> How about positive angles? Yes, and Lauren is your graphic designer, so uh -huh. she can yeah. come up with a great logo. Like, see yeah. connections. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And that's yeah. the, like I say, you know, people are—they're your world. There's their—that's what makes yeah. it all happen. Is your encounters every day, and you know, we can have a frown on our face or we can have a smile looking for it, and you know, it's not every day, right? I mean, we're uh, human, right? You know, but I also have found that when something really amazing is happening, sometimes parallel to that, you're going through a very difficult time in your life. And so watch out for that too. Um, that's, it, I can tell you, um, and I know Daryl is like, he can edit out all this, you know, what no, we're going to keep and what we're not. No. So I was married 23 years and at 23 years, I ended up walking out the front door with my kids. And that was the time I've been teaching 20 years, haven't interviewed in over 20 years. And um, I interviewed for an instructional coach job. I had to take a borrowed car because we also had had a car accident. So we were homeless and carless, oh living gosh. with my parents, used a borrowed car, went to an interview. I said things in that interview that I had never said before. Like, if you take a chance on me, you won't regret it. The next day I was in divorce court and, you know, Talk about two things happening simultaneously. Wow. Wow. If you don't pause, if your faith is not at a place where your cup is full, where you have somebody feeding into you, your mentors around you, you, you guys for each other, right? Your team of Fry Tech, you know, it, it, you can miss the mark. What if I'd said, no, I'm really going through a difficult time right now. I can't do this. But at the same time, my son was getting ready to graduate from high school and go to college. So going from a classroom teacher to instructional coach to this role financially for a single woman, I mean, that was a huge deal. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you look back at stories like that and, you know, as humans, we have to talk to each other. We can't be ashamed of, hey, I went through a divorce and it was a very hard time in my life. Mm -hmm. We have to talk about those stories to build each other up, to help each other through it. So you have someone to call when your story, you know, you're going through a story, right? Whatever that story is, mm -hmm. the celebrations and the hard times too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're just sitting over here. I am, I am I'm just... Not Nothing. Yeah, you're gonna be okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's like, it's are you talking? You're talking to my soul or something? Right. I didn't realize it, but you're right. You're yeah. so right. You're yeah. right. You know, and Harlingen definitely made the right choice, and I know that they've never regretted that as well. Looking back, and just know that you've left this beautiful mark that is not gonna fade in your yeah. district. I love it. I love it. I uh, had an opportunity this morning. Daryl's like, are you in your office? And I'm like, yeah, but we don't spend a lot of our time here. So I had an opportunity this morning and um, a, a technician at one of our schools is my former fourth grade student. So that's the other uh, part of the story wow. is that I'm a product of my district, right? I'm a student here. Uh, I was a teacher here. I'm in this role here. Wow. And so the student is a technician now at a school, right? And so he tells his librarian, hey, is that Salvarado? You know, that was my 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 <laughs> other name. And uh, it's like, I think she was my fourth grade student. So he goes to get his yearbook from 2000 and he finds me. And uh, so I'm like, oh, cool story, right? Well, a couple of weeks ago, he's like, hey, will you sign my yearbook? And I'm oh. like, uh, yeah, but give it to me because I need to think about it. So yesterday, I think I'm being all amazing. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to write him a note. I'm going to uh, give him some leadership books. And uh, I'm super excited about this. You know, I'm like, I'm so like going to make a difference in his life. I'm saying this, right? So yeah. I go and I write this cute little note about, you know, I'm so glad you remembered me and reached out to me and that we're getting to work together two decades later. And and uh, then I tell him my story about my first leadership book was given to me by my sister, mm -hmm. John Maxwell books. So I give him one, right? Mm -hmm. and then I'm like, oh, but this book's good. This So then being five books, right? So I think, oh, I'm going to go hand deliver this. Okay. So I go <laughs> and he's waiting for me. I'm like, oh, I'm going to cry, right? And he's like, um, I got you this cup. Uh, and I'm like, I'm laughing because it's like right here. He's like, I don't know if I'm ever going to see you again, but I want to thank you for being oh my, my teacher. And you've made such an impact in my life. And I'm thinking, you see, I thought, right? I thought <laughs> I was going to go like touch this guy's heart, but that's not what happened. It's the other right? way around sometimes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And so we never know. Right. The, mm -hmm. You get that little kind of thought in your head. Hey, I should call so-and-so. Hey, you know, I should tell so-and-so this. And, you know, and how many times do we not do that? And we miss the beautiful moments of like why we're here. Yeah. Right. 
Oh man. Anybody else got tears right now? Like, well, am I the what, only one? <laughs> what else do you say, man? I don't know how Lauren's just... holding it together over there, but uh... <laughs> it's just my stone cold heart, you know. Me. <laughs> let's, see, let's see if it comes up. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> there God. it is. Monica's shooting her more hand heart. Yeah. We're collecting them. <laughs> yeah, no, you guys, so awesome. you guys are amazing. You know, and like putting a podcast like this together, giving people opportunity to share like that. I mean, you're facilitating, you know, the stories that, that get out there, and I think that's a huge uh, part of where we are uh, in, in the world, right. Sharing the stories because people then can connect and relate and then it helps them, you know, continue yeah. to walk a difficult walk at times and a good walk at other times and be a celebration for others. Wow. I didn't think we're, wow. I didn't think of that, uh -huh. but yes, we are. We yes, sure so are. True. I know. Yeah. There, Monica, there I can't wait all these human, things you're doing. Yeah. There's such a human aspect to to fried, I will say like, that's what, that was the first thing that stood out to me when I was looking for jobs like this is that there's that human side of it all. And then that, that joy, that joy piece that seems to be so heavily valued, whether it's in our courses or our learning guides, I haven't met anyone more talented and, and capable than the learning guides that we have. And um, so like, even when I was looking for jobs, that was, that was what, made fried so memorable for me too is just the that human joyful aspect well congratulations to you because finding <laughs> that finding a place like that those are you know you you have to work at it and you yeah. may take a few jobs but between there before finding a place like that and i, I think that. it's doable within school environments too the yeah, the principal that i worked for for the majority of my teaching career would always say um that everyone will stay mm -hmm. wherever they are and continue to grow where they are if they feel known and if they feel valued. Um, and that, you know, that always resonated with me. And so again, you know, when I'm looking for the next step and in, in my own career, I wanted to look for a place where I would also feel known and valued. And I really do think that is the most important piece to, um, you know, sustainability in a job, retaining people in jobs, things like that. If they feel like they are going to a place where they can go through, like you were saying, go through a hard time um, and be honest with everyone of like, Hey, this is what I'm going through. Can I get a little support here and there? Like, I feel like that's just so crucial for a workplace environment. I love that. I love, and I'm so glad you shared that story. Yeah. Well, now that we've all had some Monica counseling and inspiration in our life I today, I feel great. Yeah, I feel, I feel at peace this morning. It's like, oh, yeah. Monica, send us the bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking over at Daryl. Like, come on, Daryl. The next yeah. question, or what's going to happen? No, no. Oh, well, no. You're well, reminiscing. Yeah, right you're, now. you're all are just sitting back, like soaking. We're it taking in. it in. It's great. We're, we're taking I, it in. I will say. Um, Harlan Gin um, is going to be dipping their toes in the fried online waters very mm, soon this summer. Excited. And they're going to get to meet Daryl and Lauren we're and here. Allison in mm -hmm. fried online courses. Mm -hmm. So they just, they don't even know that their next adventure is going to be really inspirational as well. Me. So and exciting. We're really excited we're excited about that. Part of that adventure. You know, right. it really talks about like, you know, we talked about COVID and like all these devices come out and, you know, teachers and people are scrambling. You have those, those early adopters, right. That had a level of some technology. Right. And so, you know, they kind of knew what to do, at least how to get started right during COVID and online and all this stuff. And then there were those that weren't early adopters. And then they're crying to the early adopters, like to please help me. But those early adopters, you know, they are the ones that kind of were the trailblazers on ways to learn. Right. Do I learn uh, like on a self-paced? Do I learn online? Do I learn in person? Do I this? Do I that? And I, the answer is kind of has been yes. I've, I, that's what I have found. Like what we want to offer in Harlingen for our teachers. You want to offer all those styles of learning because they're like, it, it works for them. And so when uh, we were talking about that, you know, fried tech, she'll, uh, Brooke will like, you know, give me the, not the whole picture because, you know, you know, that could be a water hose. So she gives me these small bites. Right. And so one of those small bites was those courses. Right. The um, 
is it the asynchronous courses mm-hmm. that we talked about? Yeah. And so um, I'm like, that's just amazing because yeah, webinars, you know, they're great, right? But self-paced courses or, you know, these asynchronous pieces, I think that that's just another menu piece for ways of learning. And our teachers need that. They need that flexibility uh, in ways to do it. And I can tell you right now, I might want to take one of those courses, but then I do want a face-to-face, you know, right. you want that variety. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited about adding that piece to our district. I think I already know it's going to be a hit and um, the, the fried tech movement, they have a following. So anytime we say fried tech, I mean, I have instructional coaches that are like, please bring fried tech back because the teachers really love it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they got their foot in a door, a couple of campuses. And now, you know, the, anytime you say fried tech, people kind of stop and listen. Mm-hmm. So it's really fun. I did. I did go to a dog park once. And then I don't know how we got in the conversation of where I work. Cause oh, she said she was a teacher and then she asked what I did. And I told her fried tech and she was like, Oh, you work for fried tech. <laughs> It's a random dog park in Houston. Like, yes, <laughs> yes, I do. You can I have your autograph. Yeah. Like, you have celebrity have status if you're in Texas. Really? <laughs> Man, okay. True story. Yeah. 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 The first time that I went to TCA with you guys, like, I didn't, because I'm in Colorado, right? So I don't get as much of the Texas celebrity vibes as you guys do <laughs> traveling around all the states. And, uh, and so, yeah, the first TCEA conference where everyone's just like lined, lined up like hundreds of people uh, outside yeah. of these sessions. I was like, oh my, we're a big deal. <laughs> this is for, this is for oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Oh, we're like fighting each other and clawing each other for that yeah. seat. I was like, what? Yeah. Yes. Big deal. Thank you. Well, we appreciate those teachers who give us that love and encourage mm-hmm. us Me to too. continue learning and growing. Like we just, we don't have all this knowledge just laying around. Like we work really hard to stay on top of it, to keep, and we're inspired by the mm-hmm. teachers in mm-hmm. the districts to keep up and to do what we do and help them. Like our inspiration and passion is to continue to bring resources that help them. Like we, we see ourselves as a team. And not as this standalone, you know, people to come see. Like we're we're a team with every single teacher in every single district in the United States, and 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 more. Yeah, definitely. And you know, educators today, I'm like, oh my gosh, like wow, you know, I yeah. I, I don't think I could ever go back <laughs> into a classroom mm-hmm. like that and like have that energy and have that. Um, I don't know. I just I don't know. I loved teaching, right? And um. I just, I'm amazed at teachers today. I really, really am. And literally, uh, Lauren, as you talk about conference and how big a deal, that's how we got to know Fried Tech was through Mm. a conference, was through a teacher. I didn't go to the session because I couldn't get in. (laughs) (laughs) One of our teachers was willing to stand in line for a couple of hours, did you not, and get in. And then she comes back with her feedback and I'm like, hey, I heard you went to a Fried Tech, like how'd it go? And they're on the list and blah, blah, blah. And so that's how we ended up. And uh, Lauren, I don't know if one of the presentations you were at in Texas was last year, but it was like a camp Brooke last year, last mm-hmm. not this year's uh, for, uh, TCA, but last year's TCA, it was like, I don't know, an airplane kind of <gasps> thing. Yes, that was Lauren. That was Lauren. That was Lauren. A session. And I got her. She's a designer. I got to meet you, Lauren. I got to meet you. That was a year ago. <laughs> but I, I didn't know we met before. Did that you roll the dice? Talking. for this moment <laughs> right now. <laughs> You kept talking and I was like, oh, I bet that was her. <laughs> yeah. Do you, I, and I put the car outfit on at one point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're probably oh, thinking, you're what is this? But that hey, was, that was such a are. fun one to do with our team. I can't believe too. that was a year ago. Over a year. Over, Over a year, a year ago. ago. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. how time flies. Yeah. That's you so see, that's how we here. started this like podcast. Old man. <laughs> I'm talking like an old man now. He's man. Like, oh, my I'm back not. started hurting. Oh. <laughs> Tech issues, still podcasting, being inspired. Heart, I mean, heartburn, sorry. This... <laughs> indigestion. Oh my gosh. Oh my, you Pepto sound like a Pepto commercial. No, no where's my Pepto? <laughs> it's right here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but um oh i know you have to go to 11 right monica i know it's yes, time so yeah oh my gosh i'm already trying to think like how can i turn this conversation into an online course somehow right <laughs> so great but uh yeah. we, we can't wait to to watch your journey on instagram as you travel the world in your rv 
Yeah. Hopefully no more explosions. Just watch the gradient in which you park your RV. But um, thank you <laughs> so much. Positive angles. Positive <laughs> angles. <laughs> We're going to end on angles. positive angles. So fried okay. fans, fried family out there, thank you for for listening and if you're if you're just listening you should come and and watch too because you know we make some funny faces here and there we learn some cool things that you can do show us monica if it it shows up i know the hard work (laughs) there you go (laughs) there you go that's what you all need to see but uh thank you all for listening for watching and monica thanks for for being our guest today we've learned so much just listening from you and brooke too thank you for coming yeah absolutely i'm so glad i was here all righty and Signing off. See you all later. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks, Monica.